Hi everybody. In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I thought I would share with you my journey with breast cancer and hopefully it will help somebody else along the way. My journey with breast cancer began in 2014. I had always been really good about getting my mammograms done. Uh, my mom passed away the end of 2013. I skipped my mammogram. But my insurance company was uh, sending me cards and calling me and saying, hey, it's time for your mammogram. So I thought, okay, in January, I went ahead and made the appointment. Uh, soon after that, it came back and said, mm, we think we might see something suspicious on the left side. Let's go ahead and do a high resolution mammogram and ultrasound. I went in for that. They said, we don't see anything, but to be on the safe side, let's do an MRI. So they scheduled me for an MRI. Uh, I had that in February of 2014. And then weeks and weeks went by. Um, I didn't hear anything. My mother-in-law said, have you heard anything? I said, no, but I'm sure it's okay. They would have told me by now. And it was like just a couple of days later, my doctor called me and uh, said, came out positive that I'm sorry, you have breast cancer, but it's not in the left side like they thought. Uh, you have it in the right side. They would have never have found it if uh, they didn't do the MRI. Uh, I had no symptoms, I had no lumps, nothing. It was the size maybe of a dime, even smaller than that. Um, after that, it was kind of like a blur with doctor's appointments, uh, all my options that I had to weigh. I opted to go with the double mastectomy because I had an aunt that passed away from breast cancer. Uh, I went ahead and had double mastectomy. But in the meantime, my surgeon said, you know, we caught it really early. It's so small. You have a very good chance that uh, it hasn't spread. I went in for surgery to have my mam my uh, mastectomy done. They said I would be in there about two hours. Uh, about six and a half hours later, I came out and uh, they said, you know, it had spread to the lymph nodes. Um, what happened was uh, if I had not been diagnosed when I was, they said it would have been about two years before they would have seen that on a mammogram. And by that time, I probably would have been terminal. Um, so I was very lucky. I had angels watching over me, uh, whatever you might want to call it. But uh, I feel very blessed that they caught it as early as they did. And that all the doctors um, were very diligent on not just uh, leaving it as, well, we don't see anything on the mammogram, so we're good to go. They went the extra step and uh, I had the MRI. So, you know, for women out there and even men, you know, if you suspect something, then, um, you know, an MRI is a, a really good way to go on that. Um, so after that, I had uh, other options on my chemotherapy. Uh, if I wanted to enroll in any of the uh, studies that they have. I went ahead and opted to go with what my doctor uh, suggested was the adriamycin cytoxin chemotherapy treatment. That is what they refer to as the red devil. Um, the red devil is very harsh. The uh, nurse that I met with before I had my chemotherapy treatment, my first chemotherapy treatment, she said, you might want to shave your head because you will lose all your hair from this treatment. Um, so I took that into consideration. At this point, I was still going on kind of like fumes. I, I really, it hadn't even really hit me. I, I just felt like it was like a cold and I was going to treat it and I, I would get better and that would be it. Um, my first, before my first chemotherapy, I went ahead and uh, had my husband shave my head, not completely down, but uh, almost. Uh, that was, <laughs> that was, you know, kind of sad uh, to uh, cut my hair off um, for me. Uh, 
but uh, I saved my uh, <laughs> my ponytail for what it's worth. But uh, anyways, I went ahead and uh, my very first chemotherapy treatment was on the day that uh, this little guy was born. So my daughter was in one hospital about 20 miles away having the baby and I was uh, sitting at the hospital in Anaheim uh, having my first chemotherapy treatment. Um, gosh, I don't even know why I'm crying. Um, I never cried like that. Uh, anyways, let me stop for a second. Um, my first treatment, I tried to be really brave. Uh, you know, I, I had the treatment and I did really well. They sent me home with a whole bunch of medications, uh, you know, for getting sick and I mean, all kinds of medications. And, um, so I, I went home and I did pretty good. Uh, the next day I said, you know, I have to go see that baby. So we went to the hospital. Uh, I was able to hold them. And then, um, after that, when we left, I, I started feeling really bad. I think that lasted about five days. Uh, I was pretty much on the couch. Uh, my hair immediately started falling out the rest of it. So I was pretty bald by the next treatment. The other thing that happened was the chemotherapy was so hard on my uh, veins that they collapsed. And I, I had the lymph nodes taken out of my right side. So you can only use my left arm now. So with the veins collapsing, my second treatment, it took him about 45 minutes to get the needle in. And I said, you know, I'm going to have a, a portacath put in my chest. So uh, the next week I had the portacath put in. After that, it was so much easier. They just went ahead and uh, they insert the needle through the portacath. And there's no, um, no problem. You know, it's just a little pinch. So for three months going through the, the uh, adromycin and cytoxin. Uh, I would go in every week or every, it was every three weeks, I guess. I would test my blood to make sure I was healthy enough and all my counts were good. Uh, then when I would go in for my appointment for chemotherapy, uh, they would uh, mix up what they would call a cocktail and it was a special only for me, and that's the way it is with all breast cancer patients. They mix your cocktail up when you get there. Every week it was different, depending on how I tolerated the last um, chemotherapy treatment. I was I was really sick during this time, uh, and you know uh, I wanted to die part of the time. To tell you the truth, I I just wanted to give up. Um, that's how sick I was. That's not like me, but I wasn't able to see any of my grandkids or be around people because there were too many germs. And, uh, that was another thing. I was <laughs> kind of secluded. So I was sad, but, uh, anyways, um, I got through the first three months and then after that uh, the second round for the next three months uh, was Paxil, I think is what it was. Um, that was a lot easier and even part of my hair started coming back but I, you know, during that time I, I made myself get up and get dressed every day. Uh, I made myself, I put on makeup and I tried to uh, do things with, I got all kinds of different uh, bandanas all colors and uh, did things you know I sewed jewelry or flowers on or something to try and you know uh, make them pretty but uh, I I wasn't gonna lay down and just curl up in a ball every day uh, at least on the days that I could I got up and I had no eyebrows no eyelashes I lost I lost all my hair so I wasn't very pretty bald, but one day we did a photo shoot out in the backyard with the, not all the grandkids, but most of them, 
uh, they all picked out the color of bandana that they wanted. And so in solidarity of grandma here, everybody put bandanas on and, and uh, we took pictures together because uh, I always wore my bandanas. So uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to take pictures with a whole bunch of little ones, but uh, it was kind of tricky getting a good picture of everybody sitting still. But uh, it is what it is. It's a good memory for me. After uh, the three months of that and then the, the Paxitaxel that I took, um, I started feeling much better. But uh, I made it through the six months and then uh, I did did pretty good. Uh, ended up with the, the neuropathy in my hands and feet. So I have still no feeling in my hands and feet part, part of them. Uh, did really good. Uh, the doctor put me on a, a regimen of uh, a Remedex for uh, five years. So every day my new uh, regimen would be to take my Remedex. An estrazole is another uh, name for it. I'm really lucky. It uh, I didn't really have side effects from it. Some people have a hard time taking it. But uh, I'm really lucky. I've stayed really healthy ever since then. Um, so I made it now five years recently. I made it five years and yay. <laughs> That's a really big uh, milestone because uh, I had a high percentage chance that my uh, cancer would spread because it had already spread so quickly. Um, so five years, I decided that uh, no longer was I going to die. Uh, maybe I was going to live for a while longer. Um, it's something after you have breast cancer or any cancer like that, that you always look over your shoulder. But I had decided in uh, March of this year, as my five-year anniversary was coming up, that I would do breast reconstruction surgery. Um, had not wanted to do it up until then. And all of a sudden I thought, you know, I just want to feel normal again. So for the last five months, I've been going through reconstruction surgery. It's a process. Uh, they had to put tissue expanders in. Um, it was kind of a, a little bit of a hard surgery and it expands the tissue and gets it ready for your implants. Those stay in for after they inject them 100 cc's uh, every week for as long as you know you you are the one that will pick how large that you want to be within reason I just wanted something normal so I did I think five uh, five injections over a period of about six weeks or so and then uh, they let them rest for a few months and then they do the final implants. So six days ago, I had my final implants put in. And uh, that was a, a little bit rough, uh, you know, a little bit rough, but uh, worth it. Um, I'm not gonna show everybody what they look like. Um, I will just show you like here you can see that uh, they're just kind of a normal size you know nothing nothing too huge but uh, I don't want somebody to look at me and say oh you know they can tell I want people to just look at me normally so anyways I just thought maybe um, anything that I say here maybe might help somebody else with their decision on what they, uh, you know, they go through, um, or maybe help somebody, uh, be more aware. But, um, I have to thank my insurance and my doctors and everybody. They did, they did a wonderful job, uh, taking care of me. And with them being very diligent about bothering me about getting my mammogram when I had missed it and uh, you know making me uh, 
following up with me uh, doing the MRI because that uh, saved my life. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Um, thanks so much, you guys, for watching. And uh, just thanks so much for watching.